I'm Scott McGregor at Scott Trades on Twitter. This week, another clip of Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau made the rounds where he criticized his opponent, the leader of Canada's Conservative Party, Pierre Polyev, for his stance on Bitcoin. We haven't really seen a lot of concrete proposals from Mr. Polyev. I mean, he, he, he did make one. That's not fair. You're right. He had one great oppor- opportunity for people to opt out of inflation. He recommended this last, last spring. You can opt out of inflation if you invest your money in Bitcoin. Yeah. No, no, no. No, no. He stayed up late, watched all sorts of YouTube videos, and came to that conclusion. He said that himself. Buy Bitcoin, opt out of inflation. Well, any Canadian who actually listened to... Maybe that's why those guys with the flags are so mad at me. Any Canadian who listened to him would have lost more than half their life savings since last March. Now, don't get me wrong. It's pretty funny. But the truth is, Bitcoin itself is an easy target because it checks so many boxes. I mean, first off, it's still kind of a new thing. It isn't apparent to some people what it does exactly. There's an environmental element to it. There's an energy element to it. It deals with money. It's a technology, but it's also an investment opportunity. It has a checkered past and, and, and China controls it, but not really. There's no chief executive officer of Bitcoin. Anyone can say anything about it. And unless the Bitcoin maximalists try and debunk it, it's assumed as fact and gets into the public conscience. I vividly remember the headline, Bitcoin will boil the oceans. Well, here we are 14 years later and so far, no boiling. I saw on Twitter... Some guy say, Bitcoin uses as much energy as my house for three days with one transaction. But those same people don't seem to question how much energy their Christmas lights use. Anyways, I'm getting off track here. I'm not going to spend this time separating Bitcoin fact from fiction. I want to separate software from politics. At the core of it, That's what Bitcoin is. Bitcoin is permissionless software that is community run. It was created in the ashes of the 2008 financial crisis when Main Street lost their homes and their jobs and the taxpayer bailed out Wall Street. Satoshi Nakamoto, whoever he or they are, envisioned a different system to bring money out of the banking system that had failed us all so badly and put it online in the hands of the people. In the last few years, as mainstream adoption started to grow, Bitcoin went from that thing that you saw in the news sometime or heard about from one of your buddies to a form of global payments and legal tender in South America. Politicians started planting their flags. Maybe it was anger about the pandemic or frustration with once again seeing central banks fire up the money printer and throw cash out of a helicopter. We started seeing Bitcoin emerge as a political volleyball for both sides to take a stance. Suddenly, corporations started allocating capital to Bitcoin to grow or hold their value on their balance sheet. Square and PayPal started adding Bitcoin to their platforms. Tesla announced car buyers could use it for payments. All of this occurring while the price of Bitcoin made a monumental advance from the depths of the pandemic lows, just over $3,000 to all-time highs. All of a sudden, everyone needed an opinion about Bitcoin. Bitcoin wasn't on the fringes of the internet anymore. It was kitchen table talk. And not just because someone knows someone who made a lot of money on it. It was becoming part of modern day conversation. Bitcoin has both left-leaning, right-leaning, and centrist values. It's fair, open, and permissionless. It works without the capitalist banks that some claim cause such a wide gap between the rich and the poor. It also has libertarian values about self-custody, ownership, and control over every aspect of your life. It has fiscal responsibility programmed in the code because you can't simply produce more Bitcoin by just pressing a button. 
Some people see Bitcoin's energy usage as necessary to maintain the chain's integrity and to keep everyone honest. Some think it's a waste of computing power. Others see it as an opportunity to promote renewable energy by building geothermal power plants and hydroelectric dams in less populated regions of the world, giving people who live in all corners of the globe a financial incentive to go green. More people in the world have a cell phone than a bank account. One of the big ideas around Bitcoin is giving people who live in conflict zones or away from city centers a bank in cyberspace. They want to bank the unbanked, where you don't need to apply or maintain or pay fees that banks require. They can send and receive money without using a third party, scraping some off the top for themselves. Does that idea have a political party? No. Is it good for humanity? I don't know. It could be. Let's see and try. It has to be better than what we're doing right now. We live in a world where every aspect of our lives leans somewhere politically. If we keep diminishing ideas because someone we don't like likes it, we will not get far as a society. Okay, so the other day I made a joke on Twitter about Bitcoin and politics, and I tried poorly to bridge the divide between people who hate a particular political figure and people who like Bitcoin. Within a few minutes, someone told me to go perform a sexually explicit action on them when I suggested that they might not know what Bitcoin is. Have we been so hurt by the world that we don't want to hear someone else's opinion because it might make us think that we don't know everything? Donald Trump is famous for saying Bitcoin is a scam, and he's considered a conservative. Pierre Polyev says he likes Bitcoin, and he's considered a conservative. But how can that be? The random guy who blocked me on Twitter says Bitcoin has a political party. The conservatives. All it takes is one Google search to find out liberals own Bitcoin too, but that doesn't generate clicks. You see, division drives emotional impact and engagement. They are trying to get you fired up, so you react. And hopefully, that reaction is a vote for them, because they're here to solve that problem. It's all a distraction and a deflection, feeding off the day's hot topic. The politicization of Bitcoin tells me that we're still very early in the development and adoption curve of digital assets and blockchain technology. Most people can't even tell you what it is, but they know they hate it and it isn't good. The truth is, we still need to find out where this technological advance leads us, if anywhere. As much as I think I know where the journey will go, the playground is global. And everyone wants a say when there's money involved. Politicians shouldn't use Bitcoin to rally donors to their side. It should be an open conversation about how all of us can leverage this technology for society. Some people see it as just a speculative investment. Others see it as a way to send value over the internet. Some people convince themselves that it's a big scam and a pyramid scheme made by the dark web and they would like you to touch them in private places if you don't agree. The future is for us to decide. The market will test and retest any thesis and the winner will reveal itself as it has since the dawn of time. Money was once livestock and then it was seashells and then we decided gold was money And then it was paper. And now money is just numbers on a screen in my bank account. You can't lock into how things are now because change is the only constant we have in life. Bitcoin, I believe, has the potential to bring everyone together. But we must be open-minded and willing to listen to understand other people's perspectives. The internet has shortened our reaction time, and most people surf with knives out for self-preservation. I'm asking keyboard warriors to put your weapon down, grow your understanding, and not let your politics be your personality. 
Make informed decisions by purposefully listening to people you disagree with to find common ground. I have a lot of friends. They know I like Bitcoin. I know they don't like Bitcoin. And guess what? We can still be friends. I believe it's inappropriate for politicians to give financial advice for sound bites, Twitter follows, or talking points, regardless of the party they represent. We found out Bitcoin is not an inflation hedge, and there's a real risk that that language hurts some people. Scare tactics about Bitcoin could also hurt people. Headline-catching words drive speculation for short-term gains, but it devalues the ideals of an open public ledger. You see, Bitcoin is a network, like the protocol created for sending an email, or the HTTP before that website that you just clicked. Nobody saw the exponential growth in computing power and human connection that we have today. Coming from email to websites to social networks, all now in the palm of our hand, more advanced than the ship that took humans to the moon. I mean, I still remember people on TV joking that the internet was a fad. And now it's a fundamental part of our everyday lives. I wouldn't listen to anyone who tells you they know where we're going next especially someone who has something to gain if you follow them. I also wouldn't put all my hopes into a politician or a political party as a solution to all world problems. Bitcoin is part of our online evolution and will bring forward transformation. Regardless of the political stance around the world, governments everywhere are now developing and planning for digital currencies. Our lives are increasingly digitized and will transition together in ways that we haven't even imagined yet. Throughout it all, politicians will continue to use us as pawns in their control game. I want to finish off by saying, please think for yourself, engage in cheerful and constructive conversations, and don't let someone on a soapbox decide your future. And that includes me. I'm Scott McGregor at Scott Trades on Twitter. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next time. From the bottom, make no half stepping. I'm the dog, I made it through so they don't ask questions. Long Beach, and it ain't no half repping. Once a dog, always a dog, so they don't ask questions.